bodies of plants have evolved through evolution. Without legs, they have succeeded in colonizing all environments through inventive sexuality. Plants have three ways of reproducing. Sexless, by auto-producing young plants. Self-fertilization, by sex between their own male and female organs. Remote sex, with pollen, an extraordinary invention that enables them to reproduce without ever meeting a companion. The sperm is protected within a simple capsule that will enable them to travel from flower to flower with the help of an insect, a bird, or a mammal pollinator. If you cannot deliver your own pollen, you have no choice but to trust it to someone else. The plant provides nectar as a reward. Uh, pollen grains are quite diverse uh, to an extent that you can recognize a uh, species based on the morphology of the pollen grain, very much like the fingerprints for, for human beings. So if you talk about 250,000 uh, species of plants, uh, there are that many, or if almost that many number of, of pollen shapes, if you will. And they can be, can be quite diverse. It's one of the great mystery of, of plant biology, why they're so diverse. Some uh, possible explanations would be, in fact, adaptation to slightly different conditions. There's an initial prototype or initial uh, pollen grain morphology that has evolved, and these has then diversified. Under extreme conditions, pollen can survive several days. It has the power to retain its water content. But just how do they achieve this? Dr. Jacques Dumay has found an explanation by observing the structure of pollen with a scanning electron microscope. Pollen is an amazing structure. It's, it's a small structure that could dehydrate extremely fast when it's released. They, and it's in fact quite a feat given their size. Most, most cells would shrivel and, and dry out within, within minutes um, under most conditions. And what it does to protect itself, it folds on itself just like origami, and becomes sealed, and therefore can travel a great distance without, without losing water. Jacques Dumay continues his investigation of ferns in the large greenhouses located on the rooftops of Harvard Forest, an offshoot of the famous Harvard University. He is particularly interested in sporangia, the reproductive organs of the fern. Using a high-speed camera to film sporangia, at 2,000 frames per second, he has discovered their technique of ejection. The catapult system is, is really uh, uh, a great inspiration. In fact, was evolved millions of years before humans ever, ever thought of the catapult that's evolved in these ferns to, uh, to release their spores and make sure that they can, they can be uh, dispersed over great distances. Relying solely on inside forces, this is also the case of the geranium, which expulses its seeds over more than one meter or wild cucumber, which holds the seed-throwing world record at almost 10 meters. To optimize seedlings' chances for survival, seeds need to move away from the parent plant. Too close and competition for light and water could make life difficult for them. Agrimonia and burdock thistles have invented Velcro to hike a lift on the back of passing animals. Under the eye of the electron microscope, we can see that each burdock spike has a hook. A hook that enables the seed to cling on to the fur of the animal. Velcro copies this idea with two bands that grip to each other, one side covered with tiny hooks, the other with small loops. 
The seed of erodium has a beak and a tail. It will screw into the ground through the movement of its tail that wraps or unwraps according to humidity levels. Drilling uh, mechanisms were invented by plants a long time ago. There's quite a diversity of mechanisms that are out there that some of them are, have been rediscovered by humans, some of them have yet to be rediscovered. The dandelion has, is using a strategy that, that guarantees uh, almost certain dispersal. If you're relying on animals to come by or things like that, you're somewhat dependent on your environment. Wind is uh, by and large always present, at least in some amount, and uh, can bring you to great distances if, if it's uh, strong enough. To colonize the world like the dandelion, most seeds choose wind where they use different tricks like a parachute or helicopter blades. This truly is bioengineering. By dispersing in millions, seeds and pollen can accomplish vast distances. To grow and conquer, they must find new and suitable environments, including our cities. They are so good at traveling that 55% of all species found in the northeast of the USA are present in the heart of New York. 60% of the entire flora of Great Britain is found in London. With their ability to infiltrate cracks and their resistance to aggressions, plants are colonizing our cities. Certain invasive plants can come from far, far away. Invasive plants do not only rely on wind to travel, with the explosion of globalization, they now take airplanes and boats to reach the continents they would not ordinarily be able to reach. The Chinese tree of heaven and the Japanese knotweed have invaded our cities. Professor Florence Piola focuses on the strategies of knotweed to crowd out native plants. Knotweeds have an extremely rigorous rhizome that grows very fast, several meters a year, and a small fragment of rhizome can relocate a short distance away, giving a new individual plant. Knotweeds are also masters of chemical warfare. They secrete molecules in the soil that poison other plants. Weakened by toxins, the native plants do not grow as fast as they usually would, and the invasive plant proliferates. In Europe, the Japanese knotweed plants arrive with a chemical cocktail that European plants ignore. Whereas in Japan, plants that live close to knotweeds have had time to adapt to this chemical cocktail and get on well. Knotweeds proliferate more in our cities than in their native environment, as they have no natural enemies, and they have even allied with other invaders. The knotweed has a special relationship with invasive ants that are not originally from Europe. We have found these ants drinking the nectar secreted by the stems, and we believe that the ants, in turn, keep the knotweed free of pests. The knotweed is not the only undesirable invasive plant. The list of concrete conquerors is long. Turkestan goosefoot, South African senesin, Chinese tree of heaven, etc. Some of them become giants, as is the case of the Nagunda maple and the tree of heaven. Trees of heaven can reach nearly 30 meters high with branches of 160 meters wide. Perhaps what is most remarkable is their huge variety of chemical molecules, including herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, bactericides, and virucides. These are invasive and harmful plants, but who isn't seduced by their beauty? The knotweed has become an ornamental plant. To achieve their goals, invasive plants know how to seduce us. 
Perhaps all plants manipulate us with their exquisiteness. <laughs>